Today I'm going to do an in-depth review on my Pet Boss pellet grill. So I'll be going over how this grill operates, um, the features that it has, how to clean and maintain the grill, and the things I do and don't like about this pellet grill. So pellet grills have become real popular over the last few years and I think it's just because of how versatile they are. Um, you can grill in these, you can bake in these, you can smoke in these. There's lots of different ways you can cook inside of a pellet grill. And I've had this pellet grill now for a year and a half. I've got a lot of cooking experience on it and I thought it was time that I should do a review. We bought this pellet grill when uh, we moved out here in our camper and we lived in our camper for a year while we were building this log home and during that time I cooked on in this pellet grill almost every day. Um, I had it right outside the camper. This was my go-to thing to cook in. And I did a lot of baking inside of this pellet grill. Because if you've ever seen a you ever seen the, the oven that's inside of a camper, you're talking it's really small. You only fit about a 12-inch pan in there, and you just can't bake a lot in there. So there's way more space inside of this pellet grill. So I found myself always uh, baking in this instead of trying to do do it inside the camper. So I've got a lot of uh, cooking experience on this grill so I'm really confident in, in, in how it works and what I like and don't like about it. So one thing I can't tell you about this grill is actually how hard it was to put together because my wife went and bought it at Academy Sports. It was already put together and basically they just loaded it up in her car and she brought it home. So I kn I'm on the, in the understanding that a lot of these will come in a box. You'll have to put them together. So I'm not sure how hard and how difficult that is. Even though pellet grills are very versatile, you can cook on them different ways, I primarily think where it uh, does the best is smoking. I think that in my mind, this is a smoker. And that's what I think its primary use is, is to smoke meat. And that's how I use the pellet grill most of the time. And... I've owned three smokers. I've owned three. I've owned a Master Built, I've owned a Bradley Smoker, and I've owned this Pit Boss. And so far, the Pit Boss is my favorite smoker so far. Uh, the only bad thing about it is, is you have to buy wood pellets uh, to put in it. So there is a cost involved uh, having a pellet grill. You are going to have to continually buy wood pellets. But this is my number one choice: is the Pit Boss. My number two choice is actually the Master Built. I was very happy with my master built smoker and then I had a Bradley smoker uh, never really was too satisfied with that you got to buy all those little biscuits from Bradley and then it broke all the time and finding replacement parts and stuff was a pain in the butt so the Bradley went to the bottom of the list I'd never buy another one so this pellet grill right here is a pit boss and it is a 820 deluxe it may have a, a few features that some other ones don't have um, one thing it has on the side here is it has this it has this kind of like a serving tray. It's got a bunch of holes in there and I really don't like this idea at all. Um, if I'm going to put food on here it's going to be greasy. It'll be dripping grease through the holes. Um, so I don't use this as a serving tray. I just use it as a shelf. So I keep my seasonings and uh, some of my grill tools and stuff over here on that. And um, now there's a little bar here on the side that holds that serving tray. There is some pegs on it where you can uh, hang some tools. And, uh, but that bar, this bar itself is, you don't want to try to move the grill using this bar on this side because it's not that strong and it will bend. So you don't want to lift with that. If you do need to move the grill, you're going to want to use the handle over here and uh, on this side. And that's how you move the grill. So on this side over here we have the chimney and uh, the little top hat on top of this chimney is adjustable. It's got a little bolt on top so you can kind of open and close that. Um, you can play around with that and that may help you uh, maintain a, a steadier temperature. On this side over here is the hopper and this hopper is where you put all your wood pellets that you're going to burn. And uh, the wood pellets come in all different kinds. You can buy them in different types of wood. You can buy them in apple, cherry, hickory, mesquite. You can buy all different types of wood chips, or wood pellets, I'm sorry. And you fill your hopper with, with those. And this hopper, I'm going to say, holds about 10 pounds worth of pellets. So it's about a half a 20 pound bag. So on the, on the front of the hopper, you have your temperature selection. And you can uh, select what temperature um, that you want to cook at. 
you can also select a smoke mode. Now a smoke mode is just a way to, to produce smoke and it kind of does a really low temperature, about 170, 180 degrees. One thing I don't like about the temperature selection is it's missing a few settings. Sometimes it skips 25 degrees, sometimes it, it, it uh, skips 50. So if you're doing some kind of baking and you're wanting to bake it like 375, you're not going to find a selection for 375 on there. You're either going to have to pick 350 or 400. So not real happy with some of the temperature selections that are available on the front. It'd be nice to have a couple more settings there. So at the bottom of the grill, it does have some nice uh, steel wheels so you can roll it around on and it does have this bottom shelf. I think the bottom shelf is just kind of a perfect spot so you can keep your extra wood pellets. The front of the grill has this really wide, nice door, has a nice handle on it. It does have a regular temperature gauge on the front. So when you open this up and look inside, you're going to see that there is actually three cast iron grates. I'm a huge fan of cast iron and uh, I love these grates. There's three of them and that's that's so you can remove them and get inside here and clean. Now there is another great uh, grill grate here on top and uh, if you notice you've only got there may be only four inches between that and the lower grates. My personal opinion of this is that I don't like it and I just ended up taking it out. So I ended up removing this grate and I just went and stored it. I've never used this grill grate. My opinion is this is just so they can say there's more square inches of cooking surface and it's it's more of a marketing ploy. So my opinion is this little upper grate is pointless, didn't need to be in there. But I do love the cast iron grates in the bottom. I know you're not going to be able to see what's under this grill grate really well. We'll get into it later when we clean the grill. But effectively under here is a heat shield and it's, and it's got a dome shape to it that's slanting downhill. So all your grease ends up going that way and it collects in a bucket down at the end. So basically how this uh, pellet grill works is you put wood pellets here on the, in the hopper. There's a little auger that moves, it'll move all your little wood pellets and it'll move them into a burn pot in the middle. And in the middle bottom of your grill there's this little burn pot and that's where all the wood pellets will be burning. There's also a fan and the fan is, you're going to always hear this fan blowing and that's really where a lot of the electrical use of this grill comes in is that fan is constant and it's just blowing air in there for combustion for that wood to burn. Now the pellet grill will also use electricity to, uh, to light the fire and get the wood pellets burning. So what it has is it has this little bitty heating element in the burn pot, in that fire pot, and it will glow red and it will get those wood pellets burning. Now that little heating element will only get hot for the first few minutes um, when you first fire up your pellet grill. Um, it's only during the light off sequence that that uh, heating element heats up. We've got our hopper full of wood pellets, so let's go ahead and light this off. So, by the book it says to start it off in the smoke mode, but actually you can start it at any temperature you want. So we can go ahead and just turn this up to 225, and it'll start up. So you know it's in the startup sequence because there's three little dots on here that will flash. I don't know if you can see those three little dots flashing, but that means that it is heating up the heating element right now and trying to light it off and it will know that it's lit when the temperature comes up so when it sees that temperature above 200 degrees it pretty much knows that it's got a fire so you can hear the fan running as it's trying to light that fan will be constant you can hear the auger adding wood pellets and it's been about it's been about three minutes now and we're already starting to see smoke now during the light off sequence is where you're going to see the most amount of smoke. Until that gets an actual flame burning, it's going to sit in there and smolder and you're going to see a lot of smoke coming out of this pellet grill. See the smoke's coming out pretty good now. It's coming out from around the door, it's coming out from the smokestack. It's actually even coming out from where the oil pan is too, where the oil drips down. So it's got smoke coming out of everywhere right now. So now we're about five minutes in. You can see the smoke is actually starting to go away and you can hear a slight roar. I don't know if you'll, you'll hear it on the video, but there's actually a slight roar. It's like there's a little jet engine in there, you know, as it's burning those flames. 
And now the pit boss is actually fully lit and running. So now that the uh, pellet grill is lit, it's going to slowly kind of co come to a constant temperature. Uh, you'll notice that it's still smoking. At this lower temperature, it will still have quite a bit of smoke, right where you're wanting to smoke at. So you're going to see a lot of smoke at these lower temperatures. But the higher in temperature you get, the less smoke there is. So say I set this at 350, 400 degrees to bake in, you may not hardly see any smoke out of this grill because it's burning so hot, it actually isn't really making much smoke. I have a lot of people actually ask me when I bake in it, does it taste smoky, you know? If I bake biscuits or brownies or something in this, does it taste smoky? And the answer that I say is no, it, it doesn't. Because when you get to that higher temperature, one, it cooks so fast that it can't get that smoky taste. And two, is that it actually um, doesn't make much smoke at those higher temperatures. So one thing I will say about baking in the pellet grill, when you use those higher temperatures, you're going to go through wood chips, wood pellets, way quicker. Uh, so that's where I feel like this is primarily best used for smoking. If you set this at 225, you'll get about 12 hours out of a full hopper of wood pellets. So if you start this pellet grill up on smoke setting or one of the lower temperature settings, it's going to overshoot it on temperature quite a bit. So this thing got up to about 325 degrees um, after it lit off. And now it's trying to slowly work its way down on temperature. So that's going to take a little while if you're trying to smoke on this thing. So that's something to keep in mind. It'll probably be about 20 minutes before this thing kind of gets all the way back down to 225 degrees so that it's ready to smoke on. So once the pellet grill comes up to temperature, you're ready to cook on it. You basically can just open up the door, go ahead and load it up, put your food in there, and, and let it cook. And it's pretty much hands-free from that point. The only thing you gotta do is just make sure that it's still got wood pellets in the hopper. And if you're not cooking for multiple hours, you probably don't have anything to worry about. So after you're done cooking your food, you just take your temperature knob and you turn that down to off. Now you turn that off and it's still got, it's still got the sound of the fan. Now that's normal. It's going to keep that fan running and it's going to make sure that all the wood in that burn pot, it gets all burned up and it helps uh, cool the grill down. So this is going to keep on blowing this fan until the grill comes down on temperature. So that's normal. So the downfall of a pellet grill is that you actually need to clean it. Now I'm not talking about the grill grates. Of course you're going to clean those every time you cook on it. Uh, no, I'm talking about we're going to take it apart, we're going to get down inside of it, and we're going to clean it. So to do that, you're going to want some gloves, you're going to want some type of a scraper putty or a putty knife, and then you're going to want a vacuum. And yeah, I said a vacuum because the inside is going to burn all that wood. It creates a bunch of ash, so you're going to need to vacuum all that wood ash out of the bottom of this pellet grill. But we're going to go ahead, we are going to go ahead and get this disassembled, and I'll show you what the inside looks like. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these grill grates out. I've got some really nasty old tongs uh, just for doing that. So we're going to pull that one out. We'll get these all out of here. Now when I take these out, you're going to see this heat shield that's underneath here. Now one feature I couldn't show you earlier is that you can actually... Uh, kind of like charbroil in this too. So this this middle section, there's a middle section here and it actually slides open and you're going to see all these slits in there. That's right over the fire pot and flames will actually come out of out of there and you can actually kind of char your meat or your burgers. Um, so that's another way of cooking. The only bad thing about that is is it's got this little lip where you can slide and open that up. So you actually have to take your grill grate off to be able to move positions on this thing. But uh, that is another feature. That's not on all pellet grills, but it is on this one. So you can see this heat shield in here. You can see, you can see all the black. Uh, this is from the grease and all the drippings. So this thing's super dirty. That's what you're gonna use your scraper on. Your scraper is primarily, is gonna be to clean this heat shield. Now the rest of this heat shield is really easy. It's got two little tabs right here that slides over and that just sets down in there. So you just got to get a hold of the sides 
you just, you just lift it up if I can get it out. There you go. Just comes right out. So once we've got the heat shield off, you can actually see the, the burn pot. That's the fire pot right there where all the wood pellets get augered into and burn. And down here, it's just all covered up in ash. So if you look down in here, you can see just how much ash is built up all around the fire pot and then down around it. Now this will cause two different problems. So one problem is, is this ash, since there's a fan in here blowing, the ash, if you get enough of it, it'll eventually start wanting to blow around and it could actually blow around uh, your heat shield and get a little bit of ash up on top of your food. The second problem is getting too much ash down in this fire pot because if it covers up the heating element that lights your fire, you won't get your fire lit and then it won't want to light off. So you need to get that this fire pot and get all the ash vacuumed out of that or you'll have trouble lighting it. So now that it's all cleaned out, you can actually see the little auger tube right here. And then actually like right in front of it, that little piece that sticks out, it looks like a little round piece that's sticking out like a, that is the heating element that actually lights uh, the wood pellets. So now that we're clean, we're just gonna go ahead and put it back together. Put our heat shield in here. All we gotta do is just make sure that it goes over these two tabs there. It's easy to put in. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this closed because I don't normally use that charbroil function. We'll put our grates back in. I typically uh, put the bigger ones in first and I put that small one in the middle. But I don't think it matters which way to put it in. Now, I don't know if you can see, focus over here. So, on this side of the grill over here, this little probe sticking up, that's the temperature probe, and that's how it knows how to adjust the temperature of the grill, is, is that little temperature probe right there. So one last thing that we actually didn't go over is the smoke setting. So there's a smoke setting on your temperature dial down here and it actually doesn't go off of temperature, it actually goes off of time. Now when you first light your grill, of course it will, it will light and it will go off of temperature to know that it's burning. But then after that, instead of using the temperature probe on the inside to adjust the temperature, it only um, adds wood pellets uh, every so many seconds. So it's based off of time. Now that is adjustable uh, down in the next to your temperature you'll see a, a P and a number that is your P setting and that basically represents how many seconds that it will add wood pellets so there's a little button on the front it's a recessed button so you'll need like a pencil or something to press in on it and you can adjust that P setting and you can tweak it until it runs at the temperature that you want it to run so you can actually get it where it's kind of down running about 170 or 180 degrees. Now the problem with the P setting, there's two problems with the P setting. One, if you unplug it, it'll go back to its default setting. So if you think you had it set and you had a power outage or you had to unplug it, you're gonna have to go back and, re and set that P setting every time. The second problem is that it doesn't know that it's actually burning no more. It's not going off of temperature, it's going off of time. So the problem that being if you get that set so low because it's kind of smoldering you know and if you get that so low that the fire goes out it doesn't know that and what happens is is it just keeps adding wood pellets every so many seconds like it thinks that it's running and you'll your your grill will lose temperature it will get cold and the whole bottom side of the pellet grill will fill full of wood pellets. It'll just keep augering all the wood pellets in there until your hopper's empty and it'll just keep 
it'll just keep trying to do that until you come and turn it off. So the smoke setting can get you into trouble. It's a setting that you just need to play with so that you know that you've got the right temperature and that you're maintaining that temperature and you're maintaining a burn. And uh, if you don't get that set right, you get it set too low, your fire could go out, but it, but it won't know it. So now at the beginning of the video, I said that this was my favorite smoker uh, so far, and it is. I really like cooking on this smoker. I've had electric smokers in the past, and, you know, they cook your meat and they can get it uh, nice and smoky, but this actually really actually burns wood. It uses electricity to start the fire. It uses it to... Uh, add air to the combustion but it's truly burning wood so you actually get the pink ring on the meat you so if you cook like a big you know like a brisket or like a pork shoulder or something like that you're gonna have that pink ring on the inside because it's truly burning uh, wood and uh, it's just it's just it's got a lot of great flavor it smokes of course it produces way more smoke than an electric smoker does in my opinion so it is just way better to smoke on I, I really enjoy it so things that I don't like is that I really like the vertical smokers be, for doing like uh, smoke sausage like I make a lot of uh, deer smoke sausage um, summer sausage and um, I won't be able to hang sausage in that so that's kind of a downfall but the vertical smoker also when you layer stuff drip grease drops down and it and the only the top one is the one that gets all the bark gets kind of a crust on it and then the rest of the stuff gets grease drippings on it and they don't really get that bark built up on there they kind of stay all moist on the outside so they this grill is perfect uh, being um, horizontal that you, I can fit you know three pork butts in here and they all have that nice big uh, bark formed on the outside and they're just per they're cooked perfectly so one of my other favorite things to cook in this is actually pizza so when you bake in this grill it has that cast iron grate in there that cast iron grate seems to get really hot and it's really easy to burn the bottoms of food in this pellet grill honestly it is so I would always elevate I would put like a basket in there or something I would elevate whatever I was baking get it up off that cast iron grate so that it wouldn't burn the bottoms bad but for pizza you want that nice crisp crust man this I love cooking pizza in this pellet grill and I and I do use a cast iron like griddle or a skillet to cook my pizza in and I, you just get a super crisp crust and it, it just does a really good job with pizza so I, I love for smoking I love it for pizza if you do want to bake in this, I will say, elevate it off that cast iron grate. Uh, do something to help keep the bottom from burning. Uh, if you're using like a, a roasting pan where it's got a lid, uh, you won't have any problems at all. You can cook in it. It'll keep that moisture in there and it'll cook just fine. So one thing I didn't actually talk about too much was grilling. Um, you can use this for grilling. You can cook your meat in there. You can you can open that charbroil function up, and then you can kind of uh, you know char that meat a little bit, so it was kind of like it felt like it was in uh, a grill. Uh, if you don't use the charring function, it will cook everything just fine. You just aren't going to have uh, any char on there. It will have a nice smoky flavor to it. Uh, generally, um, you'll you'll be able to tell that it was cooked uh, with a little bit of wood. But if I'm going to actually grill, uh, as long as this takes to heat up and to get ready, I just go straight to the Weber. So I'll just, I normally do my grilling on, I got a Weber uh, propane grill, and that's pretty much where I'll do uh, my grilling because it's quick and easy. But uh, definitely go to spot for smoking. So I hope I remembered everything I wanted to talk about on this, on this pellet grill. I've, I've been looking forward to doing a review on this for quite a long time and the reason I'm doing the review is because I really do like this pellet grill. Um, I, if I had one thing to choose out here, out here, outside our log cabin for me to cook on, I have this pellet grill, I have a Weber gas grill, and then I have a Camp Chef stove. And if I was to just pick one thing, I would pick this Pit Boss pellet grill because this is my favorite thing to cook on outside. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a bunch of information I threw at you, all, uh, but I really do enjoy this pellet grill. So I do appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Uh oh, I almost forgot one key feature some people might be interested in. It does have a bottle opener. I gotta admit that it's kind of smoky back here. I'm gonna smell like smoke the rest of the day. Woo! Wow! Smoky! I feel like closing this thing to get rid of the smoke. We need a breeze! We need a breeze here, people. Too smoky.